of the 2000s even, I believe. And um, as, uh, well, actually, it began began 2003 uh, the Sudan Liberation Movement and the Justice and Equality Movement, which sound honestly not good name. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know how many people they killed. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, the Justice largest equality death for all. <laughs> <laughs> the largest rebel groups in Darfur entered Al Fashir and attacked the, the Sudanese government, 2003. Um, and then, of course, yeah, three, 300,000 deaths. Uh, they displaced about 2.7 million people within that time. Um, just an insane. That's a genocide, folks. That is a genocide. That's a pretty good uh, standard of what a genocide can be. Yeah. So we're talking about what's happening in Sudan, and, and apparently they've had a, like a long list of of historic coups uh, <laughs> before. Uh, they're prone to it, and I think they're susceptible to imperialist influence. Where you have another superpower like Russia or China or the United States, especially, come in and try to stoke, you know tensions among political rivals fund different sides you know in the in the conflict in afghanistan the soviet afghanistan war um you know communist soviets for whatever reason it tried to invade afghanistan which is always a bad idea and it was in the middle uh, of winter too wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> well you think that they would have a jump on them because they're russian and they can stand the cold and that's how they beat the nazis was fighting in the cold but at the same time, no one can defeat the Afghani people. They're just too strong and too... Also, it's their land. When you're fighting on somebody else's land, It's they fight hard. It changes everything. But so in this conflict, you had the United States backing the Mujahideen, which were the rebel group that were when fighting. Osama bin Laden was a freedom fighter. Freedom right. fighter. Right, and he What's... was in there, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, so Osama's rocking out with the Mujahideen, getting guns from America, fighting back the Soviets, because no matter what, the United States wants to beat back the Soviets. But it's sort of the name of the game, right? It's like powers from somewhere else say, well, let me get on in this. I, will, I won't get in on this. Let's let's do some more. I got guns. I, I want political influence in your country. I think that'll help me get preferential trade treatment to exploit the resources of your country. Here. Let me throw some money at you. Uh, here's some guns. And kill these MRFers. And they do. And it's worked for a long, long time and still continues to work. Um, but what we're seeing in Sudan, we don't know exactly who's backing who here. Is that right? Because we have Egypt backing uh, one side. We okay. have the UAE. I believe it's the UAE versus Egypt are the two biggest belligerents funding both sides there. Let me check on and that. And then the UAE, but the UAE would be connected to Saudi Arabia. Oh, let's, get this, let's get this straight. It's the UAE and Egypt are backing the one side, and the other side is being backed by Ethiopia. Okay. Okay. I Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. But either way, it gets messy, people. We don't know exactly here, all the not, facts. We don't even know what we're talking about here. <laughs> whenever, whenever we don't get the facts straight, we're not journalists, we're comedians. And then whenever we're not funny, you can say, well, they're not Maybe comedians, they're journalists. <laughs> um, but no, so what, we have, what we're looking at is, and what we were talking about a lot earlier was the arms trade, the global arms trade that goes into funding every single one of these we can call them conflicts but we don't want to know what they really are it's war yeah and who's making the money from these weapons that are being sold to fund these wars well and of course we have the united states the number one exporter of global arms i think it's about 40 percent of all global arms sold by the United States with Russia, France, and China, the next three. Wow, really? Um, yeah, I mean, holy smokes. I think it's pretty much we're a, we're a gun store masquerading as a country at this point. We're just like not really interested in 
being a government represented for by the people. But of course, you know, corporate America has, you know, their talons in, you know, average citizens. It, it, it owns the, uh, the, it, well, it owns the means of production. It owns the government to a certain extent where if they can lobby and money is power, then, then absolutely their needs come over ours. But specifically weapons manufacturers and the military industrial complex. Did you ever see this speech? Well, who was it? Eisenhower gave, right? Which one? What was he well, saying? He, he was saying, uh, basically, there will come a time. He's, he's seen this coming with World War II and how we manufactured goods and we had a capitalistic sort of for-profit war machine. He said, I see this to be one of the greatest things facing our countries in the not-too-distant future is that... I sound, kind of sound like FDR. <laughs> um, I do my eyes now, boys. It was come to my attention that uh, sometime in the future there will be an issue with this military industrial complex. And he had just invented. He called he, it out. He invented the term or whatever, I think. There was, he, it didn't even exist at the time. Um, it was this self fulfilling, self cycling sort of uh, machine Wrong. where. <laughs> they could lobby they could lobby the government enough to go to war or or that it was advantageous to the United States to constantly be involved in skirmishes anywhere in the world at any time saying it boosts so that, this production boosts right. the economy of weapons and war killing people with landmines turns out to be pretty Very profitable business and you know who's you know who's paying the bills don't you charlie on all these th things Definitely uh, not the billionaire class. <laughs> <laughs> That's for true. Uh, you know who it is, folks? It's people, regular people, taxpayers. Taxpayers are funding every CIA coup that's existed, you know, uh, that we've done abroad, the 80-plus different interventions militarily that we've pulled off in other countries to subvert their democracies and overthrow their that democratically. <laughs> that we know about. Those are the ones that we know about because we got the, uh, we got the papers on or whatever. Um, that's the ones we know about. Come on. Just 80. Just 80. <laughs> Biggest top 10 weapons manufacturers in the world. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman. Uh, these are all U.S. RTX Corporation, General Dynamics, BAE Systems, that's in the U.K., Airbus, that's some trans-European plane thing. Uh, I think they make airplanes and jets to jumbo jumbo jets, fighter jets, you name it. Who else? B -b 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 the jets. Uh, Leonardo <laughs> in Italy, I don't know what they make. Uh, probably something horrific, no doubt. And, <laughs> yeah. and one in France take, takes the list. But um, so you're looking at most of the Western world being the the arms industry, and so With we love the, it's the AR-15. I believe is the number one weapon sold throughout the world, and I think let's see, five to ten million civilian AR-15s available as of 2016. Ooh. See, that's intense, isn't it? That's a, that's a lot of guns. I mean, what? Do I, they don't open cans. They can't fix your muffler. They don't can't make you pancakes. They don't, you know, they get on the internet. They don't make you waffles either. <laughs> don't what, even what? have a Wi-Fi connection. I'm what sure actually it? some of them do probably. Sure. <laughs> you think so? The, the drones definitely do. <laughs> so I got to ask, are there guns? That can with make you pancakes with that have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Just shoots out pancake batter. <laughs> well, I think you could. Honestly, I think you could wrap it around the gun barrel and fire it off like, you know, 20, Just 30 put times. put some blueberries right in there so they'll pop right out and be nice. And cool. Yeah. <laughs> Blueberry gun. Can't Somebody says, can I get a smart gun that connects to Wi-Fi? <laughs> Apparently, I, I want to say it does exist. I would say it, it's out there somewhere. And as we're looking this up as a joke, there's people out here looking it up for serious. 
Oh, certainly there are guns that get on Wi-Fi. They can track your when the gun has been shot and where it is. It tracks the location of the gun. Sure, it's movements, body heat, all that kind of stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, totally necessary, you know. One of the first uh, AI fucking automated gun systems that was put in public somewhere in the world was in Israel. Um, in the, where the people are supposed to come, all the checkpoints that uh, all the Palestinians are forced to use. Mm -hmm. um, they have these automatic weapon systems now, and this, it doesn't sound good, Charlie. So is this just, oh, Palestinian, oop, blow their head off. Or how how is this system working? Maybe it's by CCT. Maybe it's automatically controlled like that. But it's like, it's a robot gun. That's what I heard. Uh, let me check on that for you. Uh, yeah. And because we know that in Israel and in Palestine that all of the, the these regulations for keeping track of every single Palestinian's bowel movement and every possible thing that they could possibly track is increased in the past few months and will continue to increase. Yeah. Uh, apparently, according to this, a 2020 report from the United Nations Security Council, a panel of experts on Libya published March 2021, stated that a Cargo 2 drone hunted down and attacked a human target in Libya. Whoa! So that was the first time an AI uh, attacked a human being. Holy smokestacks, Charlie. Robocop. Totally. Not even. Well, that Robocop didn't even fly. I mean, holy smokestacks. Can you Only imagine? Only Robocop too. Come on. Oh, gee whiz. Cripes on a crutch. Okay, so this may be the first time an autonomous killer robot armed with lethal attacked human beings. In May 2021, Israel conducted an AI-guided combat swarm attack in Gaza. Since they... Oh, of course they did. How How, how neighborly. Since then, there has been numerous reports of swarms and other autonomous weapons being used on battlefields around the world. And in addition, DARPA is working on making swarms of 250 autonomous lethal drones available to the American military. I'm blowing my own mind here, people. I'm just sitting here reading what's on the screen. What do you think, Charlie? End of times? Yeah, I mean, it's already here. I wouldn't be surprised if a robot just walked by my window right now and blew my face off. What's in it for the robots? Destruction of humans? <laughs> you think they immediately? Do they care? <laughs> you know what? I I don't I don't think that they're gonna, you know, it's their fault or whatever. It's somebody's programming them with a bias to say, hey, if you see any black person, doesn't matter. They're you know you need to execute them, and the robot says okay. Mm -hmm. It's like the Iron Giant. Someone remember that yeah. movie? Oh yeah. It's a great. I don't. Movie. I don't think it'll be quite like that, right? Well, he's he's programmed to kill, and then his little boy, you know, becomes friends and shows him that love and peace can conquer all. Yeah, which is a sweet story, but... But speaking <laughs> of uh, the U.S. and the guns, so just yesterday it was announced that the U.S. appeals court has ruled that a $10 billion lawsuit filed by Mexico against U.S. gun manufacturers can go ahead. Ooh. So that's the government of Mexico arguing, this is, quote, the flood. They're using the same kind of dialogue that the U.S. uses against Mexico. The flood of illegal guns across the border is a result of deliberate business practices by U.S. gun makers. Yeah, there you go. So is this going to go anywhere? Probably not. What is the real benefit for arming citizens in this way. I mean, from, uh, like, we obviously Profit. know what... What's that? Profit. Yeah, right? I guess. I mean, are they that... Well, of course. It's, it's because if the military-industrial complex is selling... If the main export of the United States is weapons, then why not, you know, get high on your own supply? Because you can't buy from yourself. You can certainly... I mean, I'm sure you could funnel it and find ways to 
spin it around, but if you can just get rid of it for a profit without having to jump through those hoops, I guess. It's even easier. And of course, the United States... Well, the United States government is totally uh, comfortable allowing gun culture to exist as a oh, thing. They need it. They need it to continue to exist, and I'm sure they would like to spread it all over the world. So, what's the psychological correlation between uh, the gun nuts in America and like the fucking gun nuts in the government who want to constantly go out to war and bomb some poor, helpless third world nation? Uh, and like the vibe between the two, like the two groups seem to get along well. Normal brain rotted, you know, conservative Middle Earthers will be like, yeah, you know, got to bomb some brown people sometimes while also cleaning their gun and being scared of their own shadows. Well, it's all this illusion of safety is one of the psychological aspects to it is that the more guns that I have and the more people we bomb, the safer I will be because they can't get to me because I'm surrounded by this arsenal. Which is, I think, the the top thing that keeps these Second Amendment people, you know, shivering in their boots. <laughs> because that's what it really is, isn't it, like, I, well, okay, okay. So there's the there's the argument. It's in the Constitution. It's in the Constitution. It's in the Constitution. I'm at the point where I'm just ready to, you know, the Constitution is meaningless now. It's been shat on and doesn't matter anymore because it's since the beginning of time, since it was put in place, it's been just yeah. used and abused and. Read just start it all over again. Write a new constitution. The constitution is not this thing you can just hold up every time you run out of logic. It's the same thing. They hold up the constitution every time they run out of an argument. They do yeah. the same thing with the Bible. They hold it up and they're well, I don't know, but and God then ignore told me it's the okay. rest of what's in it. But this yeah. one part that I'm going to highlight right here, this little part. Yeah. That Only the next sentence completely negates my argument. But yeah, simpletons don't want, you know, simpletons want simple answers. Uh, these people cannot grasp data or something. It's not something that they can do. But when somebody talks emotionally to them and relates in some way to them, then they'll buy it, uh, you know, hook, line and sinker and schwinkter. Uh, <laughs> accor according to the Gun Violence Archive, there were 37,000 gun deaths in the United States in 2022. Of these deaths, 20,000 were homicides, 14,000 were suicides, and 2,000 were, well, they were just accidents. <laughs> just accidents. <laughs> Sorry um, I aimed this gun at your face and blew it off. Yeah. Didn't mean to. So that right there, I mean, that's 2,000 people you could definitely save just by taking guns out of the equation and not letting people have them. Boom. Homicides, yeah, people are still going to kill each other. Uh, suicides, oh, you betcha. Um, but unintentional gun deaths, it's kind of stupid, yeah. But I mean, suicides, I would argue, I mean, I don't know, I've never committed suicide. But I have, you don't want to do it, it's terrible, yeah, you know. It's, you don't really come back from it, usually. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of suicides are going to be okay, I have a gun here, or I can go out and buy a gun right away. If you're going to kill yourself with a gun, yeah. do you think that it's... If guns were not for sale down the street, would a lot of these suicides not have happened? Because it's kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing, like, all right, I'm ready to kill myself. Or yeah, I, huh? I mean, that's a great question. With their gun before they commit suicide... I mean, a lot of psychological stuff goes into it, so which I can't answer right here. But... How many suicides? It's a good question. How many suicides could have been avoided by, you know, lack of access to guns? I mean, I would say at least three-fourths of suicides, but maybe that's, you know. 14,000 is kind of high, also in a developed country, I think. Uh, people well, the are gonna suicide rates have been going up, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Or 
Or have they stayed the same? Or No, I think the suicide rates are going up. I, I wrote an article recently that had something to do with, uh, you know, sharp increase on the number of death or despair-related deaths. So people that were too sad to go on, which is admirable. Hey, I'm not saying whatever, but I'm, you know, life's tough. I'm not here to defend any position. I'm just saying humanity is a mess and uh, life is sort of long and arduous. And the United States government is doing absolutely nothing to give anyone more hope for the future. Oh, no. <laughs> Why would they? Um, yeah, suicide rates have been going up in recent years. According to the World Health Organization, the global suicide rate was 10.5 per uh, 100,000 people, which doesn't feel like a lot. But in 2019, that means about 1 million people die by suicide every year. That's, That's pretty hefty. That's hefty. That's a hefty amount. Um, substance I mean, how abuse. Many people, how many people die a year? Good, good, good question. What percentage of them are? Which, I mean, that number can fluctuate if you get the Israeli military involved and the right. Sudanese military involved. And yeah. If, in, if there's inflation, the number goes up. Inflation, uh, which, is all just, which is all just market gouging anyway, so it all goes back to evil people yeah. manipulating so, people's lives. So I don't know if this is globally or in the United States, but let's just go with this. The number of people who die each year varies depending on the source, but it estimated that about 61 million people died in 2023. I think we should have a moment of silence for the 61 million people that died. 61 million people died. That's almost the entire population of Germany. Wiped off. Gone. And what number of that is just natural causes? Well, uh, let's talk about the cause of death. So uh, neonatal conditions, 2.2 million. Now, I don't know what neonatal means. I would guess that has to do with yeah. ch children yeah. deaths. Yeah. Look that yeah. up, Charlie, while I ramble. It, neonatal. Uh, uh, relating to newborn children. Yeah. So that's, that's like newborn children, uh, miscarriages. I would assume. Yeah. No, that would be terrible. You shouldn't count certain types. Like, if you count abortions into that, that's so ludicrous. Um, neonatal, yeah, probably some kids, infants dying. Always a big laugh, I guess. Real uplifting news here. Uh, neonatal period is the first four weeks of a child's life. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go, folks. A little uh, information coming at you. Uh, tr trachea bron bronchus and lung cancers, eight one point eight million. That's quite a bit. Uh, ischemic heart disease, one point seven million. Alzheimer's disease, one point six million. Strokes got about a mil and a half. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease killed one point four. Diarrhea diseases, typhoid and cholera. Yeah, just like uh, stomach bugs and stuff like that. Which I just Dirty had. water, right? There's a lot yeah. of that, well. that makes sense. I mean, did, did I heard the story about this journalist that was happened to be in the right place at the right time when the hurricane hit Haiti and then I think the waterways got uh full of cholera or something. There was like a cholera <laughs> outbreak mm -hmm. because because UN people that came to help were shitting in the rivers. It's like, no, don't do that. Um neonatal perch <laughs> preterm birth complications and ne nephrosis, which sounds not good. It sounds like leprosy. Nephrosis. Yeah. So how many people were born is the question. So 61 million people were born in 2023. Nephro nephrotic syndrome includes kidney failure and end-stage renal disease. Ooh. How's it caused? Uh... Happened due to the loss of protein in the urine. Ooh. But I don't know how that happens. Well, I don't. I, 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 I drink the pee that doesn't have any protein. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I drink pea protein shakes. <laughs> Pure protein, urine flavor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Pea protein. I don't, that doesn't sound right. I think I'll pass on that one. Yeah. Um, so that's a right. lot of people dying is what it comes down to it. There's Absolutely. a lot of people committing suicide. There's a lot of people being killed by bombs and guns. Yeah. So, oh. so we know how many people are dying. Guess how many people were born? Same period of time in 2023, 61 million people born. Uh, I'm sorry, died. How many people were born in 2023? Less, less than who died, right? Or more? What do you think? Global I think, population. I think less. You think less? I don't know why I'm thinking less. Uh, I would have guessed that there was more. I would guess that the the birth rate is always outdoing the death rate because otherwise we would have peaked. Then we would have been peaked. I think that would have been big news. They say, oh, well, we're... I think that's... People are saying... Elon Musk says population collapse, but in reality... The population keeps growing, so it's 134 million births worldwide in 2023. Yeah, so it's over double. Yeah. So but are those are those births also being counted in the neonatal deaths and things like that too? Good point. I would hope not. Uh, that would be gross misconduct with data. You know. So what, what would you? Why would you do that? Well, you can only trust a source so much. I got the numbers. What yeah. do they mean? It's only as good as the people who took the numbers. And if you're in Texas and you had a miscarriage, does that count as a birth too? Yeah, right. If you fart and uh, the peanut falls out, is that a, a birth? The number of births varies greatly from country to country. In 2023, uh, the highest number of births was recorded in India with 26 mil. China was second highest with 10 mil. Uh, and other countries with high birth rates were Nigeria and the United States and Pakistan. The United States still cranking out a, f a few units. I don't know. <laughs> Does that? Do you, what do you think, Charlie? Is this uh, projected to keep on going, or what do you think? Well, I don't think people are going to stop boning, so I think that people are going to continue to get pregnant. Well, didn't you hear about the sperm rates uh, dropping? No, I did not hear about that. Oh, this, you'll love this one. Sperm rates have been declining uh, globally. All our sperm is becoming microplastic? or I think it could have something to do with that. It could have something to do with our sort of pesticide, herbicide-laced food. It could be yeah. have to do with the, fuck, eco... I you know it could be the uh, could be a leprechaun I don't really know <laughs> it's definitely a leprechaun <laughs> it's uh, I, I think it's a leprechaun I think I read that in the Guardian um, <laughs> there is evidence to suggest that sperm counts have been declining globally in recent decades uh, 2017 study published in the Journal of Human Reproduction Update uh, sounds legit found that sperm counts had decreased by an average of 52% between 1973 and 2011. Wow. Can, did you hear that? Okay, 52%. Then why, why are the birth rates not going down if, if half the sperm is no good? Well, is, are, the, are the... Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Well, let's see which countries are most at... Um, most at uh, risk for this. Um, so let's finish on. The study was analyzed from a 185 study that included over 42,000 men from 196 countries. Okay. Well, you know what I think it is? I think it's just power and numbers or whatever. You get enough people doing it. Um, something's going to give. Doing and girl, it. <laughs> and, the, and the guys that are firing blanks, they get dumped and they, you know, the lady moves on to... Somebody who's got it so going on. it's just on. straight up Darwinian evolution right there. Hmm? Maybe. I don't really know what... Um... The strong sperm go on and then the weak sperm just kind of peter out? Or... I guess. But if the I numbers mean, are still going down, that wouldn't equate. So. Still, yeah. Well, no, no correlation, no causation. I have no idea. 
Um, the study the authors found that the decline in sperm counts was most pronounced in Western countries. Oh, Western countries. All right. Boom. Uh, but it was also seen in other parts of the world. To, so that that says a lot. We don't know what the what was the fertility rate before 1970 in the United States. I'm sure it was relatively high. Baby boomers, 1950s, that post-war poontang. Uh, but now, but back then they did have a lot of, you know, a lot of people were dying, giving birth, and you know, it's a lot safer to give birth now and to be pregnant. In terms yeah. of, if you have access to medical technology, if and that's a big yeah, if. if that's a very large if. Uh, so some of the some of the factors could include exposure to environmental pollutants, uh, pesticides, herbicides, uh, BPA have been linked to decreased sperm counts. Or see right there, that's Monsanto. That's crazy. I I frequently get in arguments with people over glyphosate because there are paid corporate trolls all over the internet who argue on behalf of these multinational corporations for the safety and efficacy of their products. That big lump on your testicles, it's not from us. It's, it's, it's all that. It's got to be, you know. It's definitely those lattes you're drinking. No, it's maybe that 5G. Oh, it's that 5G. Is that Your phone's in your pocket all day. That's what did it. Do, have they ever decided to do phones cause cancer? Is that... That's a good one. I think it's relatively... Not a real thing. I think that they have radiation just in such micro doses that it doesn't really matter. But you know, we can we can we can check well, yeah. on and now that. Now we have we have Wi-Fi and we have all our all this stuff flying through our brains constantly. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a big question of whether or not that does anything at all. No, but but the scientific consensus is it's fine. Okay, let's mm -hmm. be honest here. I'm not going to go full conspiratorial. Mm -hmm. They say it's fine. Okay, so it's probably fine. Uh, radio waves, stuff like that. But they are these bizarre waves that go through your body and through everything. And so like this. it's very, very interesting. Um, it's also waves from the sun. I mean, there's, you know, interstellar. <laughs> I don't believe in God, but I do believe, if anything, that there could be something interesting or even detrimental about some of these technologies maybe you know that's the spiritual side of me saying it but i know mostly charlie they don't it's not a big deal yeah. but um there's plenty of more things that'll kill you quicker that are just right out there in front of your face right that's what i would say i would say prioritize the threats and what's more imminent you know um but, but what yes is, it, what is the threat what's the biggest threat here well you want to know I was going to say, it says right here, cell phones emit low levels of non-ionizing radiation when in use. To, uh, uh, however, the available scientific data shows no categorical pr proof of harm or exposure of this type of radiation. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, honestly, I always leave a window open for, you know, maybes. But you want to know what the threat is. What's the threat, people? Greatest threat to what? What, the individual or humanity or to, to the family, to the family unit? What? <laughs> the greatest threat to the family unit is, of course, rock and roll music. <laughs> and, uh, and homosexuality, yeah. Oh, of course. Them gays ruining yeah. the families. Yeah, typical. Did you guys hear that the lady who does the Moms for Liberty uh, group down there in Florida, she's like this. Have you heard of her? Yeah. And she just got hired by the Oklahoma school board, is it? Really? Or... She probably or, did. Is she, that who, or am I? Yeah, yeah, of, totally. Like, she that's what mm. she does. She goes as a consultant and goes into schools and tells them which books they should have and which books they shouldn't have, and if there's a rainbow on anything, you should probably torch it or whatever. Just, uh, <laughs> but the the funniest part about this, she's staunchly anti homosexual, anti gay, everything. <laughs> Guess who just got caught being in a sex tape with another woman? <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, this happens all the time. It's it, it's almost a daily occurrence at this point. 
Yeah. <laughs> right wing Republicans who are anti whatever come out as secretly the thing that they're anti as about. The thing. They are always the thing, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. One of the richest men in the world, his name is Peter Thiel. He's a billionaire, evil guy, uh, owned uh, uh, early starter PayPal, uh, neo-Nazi funder guy. He gave Trump a bunch of money to run for president. Um, super sketchy dude. Republican. Belongs to the Republican Party. Gives them millions of dollars to uh, for campaigns. Dude is gay. Dude is totally gay, openly gay, married to a guy, also bangs little dudes, little kids on the side or whatever, or like ah. young men. Um, who knows? He probably diddles kids. All these billionaires are totally creepy in every way. Um, but this guy, totally gay, gives money to the most anti-gay political party that we, we have. It boggles so the mind. Well, because the tax benefits, right? The tax, we, they use ideology to get people stirred up. It's not about, it's, it's about getting working class people to vote for something that's actually in our best interests, which is a whole hat trick in and of itself. Like, here's what you don't know about the estate tax, right? The estate tax was this thing that uh, said when you pass on your inheritance to your kids when you're rich, you have to pay a tax, and that goes back into the money pool where everybody in society can use it. Well, they were trying for years to figure out how do we get rid of this gosh darn dang old uh, estate tax so that rich people, us, the winners, can keep the money when we give it to our kids. And so they went to work. They went to the think tanks. They gave them money. They said, okay, do some focus groups. Pull in working class average Joe country bumpkins from, you know, hee haw fucking Arkansas and ask them all these different questions on how to get them to think about how do we get people to whatever, you know, vote against their own best interests and allow rich people to keep more of their money. And eventually they settled on this idea that if they call it the death tax. And they say, well, what if I called it the death tax? Would you be more or less in line? Strongly agree, strongly disagree, neutral. Uh, how Without do you feel? Without knowing anything about it. Right. right. <laughs> what if I, what, what sounds more fair to you? Estate tax or death tax? And then they went, oh, death tax sounds bad. As soon as that the focus groups came back with the data that showed, hey, people are really turned off by the idea of a death tax. They ran with it. They got the psychology of it down, ran to Fox News, put it on the presses, and ran a 24-hour news cycle saying, the death tax. They want to keep your money after you, you've earned it and you want to pass it on your kid? That's the death tax. That's wrong. Nobody take should. It. No. They want to take your money. Ah. And take... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to. Face turning cherry tomato red. <laughs> <laughs> It'll still always be. Yeah. It's so good. Um, yeah, yeah. They did it successfully. What they did, they scared the bejesus out of uh, regular people. Guess what? Fear tactics. Guess what? It passed. And now rich people can have extra loose rules when it comes to, you know, passing on their wealth to their kid, which, you know, and that's the thing here, people, is just because, you, you know, you were a, a, a billionaire who was self-made and you created all these wonderful gizmos that help humanity and you were this hard... I pulled myself up on my bootstraps. I pulled myself up on my bootstraps and did everything on my own. These Gee willikers. Air boots. Come on. Come on. <laughs> don't even know how to tie their own shoes. Yeah. Um, but in reality, these people... When they pass their shit on to their kids, there's no guarantee that their kids are going to be as good as they are. Why do they get a special break in society? Shouldn't they uh, prove to their usefulness in society? Because I'll tell you one thing, rich little kids who never have to work for anything, they may be able to play classically trained violin and, and whatever, do fencing and all this other fun <laughs> stuff. There's no guarantee that they're not going to be total D-bags. 
they're going to have uh, Marie Antoinette kids that are just don't understand anything about how the w- world works, reality. And then, and I think that's what we have now. <laughs> right. That's what we have now is just a bunch of generations of entitled entitlement getting sort of worse and worse. Versus yeah. generations that have been stuck in poverty since the very beginning. Yeah. And for some reason, we procreate anyway, even though we don't, you know, don't have any money. Well, let's, what do you, what should we do, honey? Well, we could, we could fuck or we could drink monster energy drinks and chain smoke. What do you want to do? Well, let's fuck and then we'll do that. Do all three. Let's do all three at once. (laughs) I mean, I grew up poor, man. That was the only thing that she did. The Um, only hope I have in life is a monster energy drink to get me through. Right. Taco Bells and Slurpees and candy bars and everything. It's a reality that we have to accept about humanity is that there are so many miserable, shitty things in the world that sometimes a Taco Bell is the one thing that's going to get you through the day. You believe that? I do. I do. And it's, it's, it's sad. It it hurts me deep down inside, but there are a lot of people out there who are just completely hopeless and have lost any hope for yeah. the future. So here's a story for you. You're going to love this. Have you heard of the drug Ozempic? No. You haven't heard of this at all? O- Ozempic? Yeah. Check it out. Ozempic. O-Z-E-M-P-I-C. You can Google it uh, or whatever. It's a For new type drug. Two diabetes. Okay, go ahead. You read it out. That's what that. That's what Ozempic dot com says. Oh it's an my Injection God. for type two diabetes. The Ozempic Trizone, once weekly prescription Ozempic, along with diet and exercise, lowers blood sugar in adults with type two diabetes. That's what the Ozempic website is telling me right now. Um. So here's the thing. This is the most frightening development that I've seen in a minute because pharmacological stuff that comes out is some of the most disturbing for me just to just to understand how humanity has sort of surrendered to some things and said I just don't want to be fucking depressed anymore I'll take anything to be or I I'm, I'm I just want to be able to I just want my kids to fucking behave so just give them the pills and mm-hmm. uh or and in this case, I don't want to work out and I don't want to eat right. Just give me a pill that makes it okay for me. So here's the thing: Ozempic is shown to have incredible weight loss um, effects. It shuts off the part of your brain that tells you you want food. It also makes it so food moves slower through your gut, and Which it also constipation. I would think so. I have no idea for real. Um, well, the most but, common side effects of Ozempic are constipation, diarrhea, and vomiting. Oh, so you, so you get both. Maybe you get diarrhea and constipation. You're constipated and you have diarrhea at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, get, I just get the vision of like a tiny stream of like liquid water coming out, <laughs> followed by like a stone coming out slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, the best of both worlds. Oh, to, to have it all, to have your cake and <laughs> eat it too. And then you can be vomiting at the same time. <laughs> she whiz. Um, yeah, the, the, those sound effects sound great. Uh, but oh, yeah, along so, with thyroid tumors. There's one too. Okay. Yeah, but, well, <laughs> I got it here too. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, constipation. Um The other thing is I heard bone loss. Like a lot of the uh, weight that you lose in it is bone loss. I don't know. Now my my, my arm ain't got no bones. Yeah. Oh, my God. What people will do. Does that mean it like breaks down the calcium in your bones or? Well, I think maybe if it ox. I don't know. What about bone loss? I'm going to ask it. Let's see what it says. Has been associated with potential effects on bone and muscle health. It could lead to well. It, well, here's the thing. Um, it, yeah. So, uh, rapid weight loss medications like GLP-1 
lycosempic can lead to a decrease in muscle mass, reduced bone density, and lower resting metab- metabolic rate, which can, can contribute to conditions such as sarcopenia, the gradual loss of muscle mass, mass strength, and function. So what happens is you actually are sending nutrients to your bones. When you eat something or you breathe in air, it goes into your organs, into the bloodstream, into the muscles, and then into the bone. And this is the same when you eat something. It gets absorbed through the lining of your stomach, gets pushed through the uh, you know, bloodstream, and then goes to the muscles and then to the bone. So I just learned this recently. What you eat and what you do can have an effect on you. Your breathing can have an effect on your bones. So don't think that they're just like these innate sort of mm-hmm. skeleton parts. <laughs> like the dancing skeleton in those old Disney cartoons. Just playing the xylophone on my ribs. Yeah. I like I'm so skinny that when I die nobody's gonna even recognize me. They're just gonna go like, Oh yeah, what's up dude? Be like, just a skeleton. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> Uh, in some situation where my skeleton would be out on display. Actually, I want to be turned on to... <laughs> sitting on a park bench. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That'd be cool, actually, if you could sterilize it and put a skeleton out, out in there. It would be, you know, eventually some kids would come by and, like, dr- carve swastikas on your skull. and. <laughs> but then you come back to haunt them. Yeah, that's good. That would keep kids in line, maybe, yeah. The anti-Nazi no. skeleton ghost. Yeah, that's me. But anyway, that's what's I, keep kids in line in America. <laughs> uh, I don't take Ozempic, although I look like I do. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, what's your take on this? I mean, this is a for me. It's a twisted tale of humanity surrendering to its own. Well, so uh, what is it? it's supposed to be for diabetes, for type two diabetes, right? Hmm. For, I mean, there are some people that probably need it because they're at that point where they're going to die if they don't change. But so, are you are you saying that people just need to get off their ass and go diet and exercise without heard, going for Ozempic? Or what I heard today that it is the people, the maker, the people that are studying it, who are in some fancy hospital. I forget. Um, all the names of these uh, high up John Hopkins the Mayo universe. Clinic or the John uh, Hopkins. Yeah, one of these uh, places. The guy, the guy is studying this stuff, and he is sure that it's necessary for the interim while people are l- l- still trying to. I was really cynical. He says that oh well, eventually we're going to get on track with eating right and everything's going to be great eventually. But for now, we just want to do this for the short term people that just need the help now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, have you have you seen the political landscape of what's going on <laughs> with the regulation of junk food in America? It's not going good. Uh, you know, the I forget how many people are obese in America, like 60, 70 percent. Do you know? A lot. How many people are obese in America? Uh, I do know that... Um, out of the, all the people that are obese, which there are some that aren't obese because they didn't, they weren't like that originally, but seventy percent of obese people it comes from dietary habits, and mm-hmm. that right there is just, it's it's not sad. It's we could do better than that, um, and uh, and fat people. I don't, I'm not. I don't have anything against fat people. I love fat people. It's all good. I'm just pointing out. <laughs> The, the 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 sort of the politics of it and the health of it. Um, if it if oh and if you oh, have to throw in you have to throw in psychology, you have to throw in anxiety, PTSD. Like for some people, eating is a is a way of controlling, you know, anxiety, trauma. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that probably fits in with dietary habits because if you're eating for pleasure or eating as a drug or something then yeah that that's that'll kill you dead at 40 years old if you if you're that if you have that mentality um 
I drink scotch. I know it's not healthy, but I can surely admit when I when somebody comes up and says, "Hey, this is obviously <laughs> it's not good for you." Right. And even the the glass of wine a day is fake. It's it, it, a Japanese study found that any alcohol at any amount destroys your DNA and totally uh, ups your chances of having cancer. And uh, I know that, and here I am still <laughs> going at her. Um, but, but then so, you see these interviews with the hundred and thirteen year olds, like, "Well, I drank a glass of scotch a day, and that's what kept me alive." She was. Um, which I mean, it could be related to, you know, one glass of scotch a day reduces your anxiety, reduces hypertension while giving you hypertension. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, you, that's what you were saying earlier. You were saying, well, if you can eat a candy bar and it makes you feel good, maybe that staves off some uh, stress related uh, sickness you could have later. And I was like, I agree with that. I agree that like every once in a while gorging on a bucket of ice cream can actually probably be beneficial to you or getting wasted with your friends or yeah giving you these dopamine reactions and you know something to also reset your batteries or reset your like mode so that you get out of whatever cycle that you get in where you're stressing or worrying and when you go out with your friends and you drink and you get kicked in the balls a few times, you realize that, uh, <laughs> or the vagina, who, whoever you are, and that you realize that life is sort of uh, a, a winner-take-none situation. At the end of your life, it's over and where it's all temporary, so don't take it too seriously, et cetera, et cetera. And so. so eat all the goddamn Taco Bell that you can? <laughs> well... Eat enough to where you can at least get to your life expectancy, right? Just be like, ah, as long as I can make it to there, that's good. <laughs> make it to 38. I'll be good. Yeah. Give me another gordita crunch. So uh, speaking of obese people, the latest data indicates that uh, 39% of U.S. adults are obese. So it's about 40%. With, oh, with the 30% uh, also being overweight. So that, uh, altogether, that 70% of the population are either overweight or obese. I like how they tried to try to trick me there. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I would have been those one of those people too had I not had just genes from a poor person from Alabama who's just thin. I don't know why my family's thin, but we're just homely, scrawny, unkempt sort of people. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm unkempt and yet I can't lose the weight at all. So. <laughs> They're not mutually exclusive. You can be, you know, both. You can be, you can be unkempt at any age, at any size, at any race. It's great. <laughs> it's one of the things that brings us together. <laughs> throw, throw out the comb. Throw out the tooth, toothbrush. <laughs> Don't change your drawers. You'll be good. That's what's going to save the world. I believe that. I haven't changed my underwear in seven years, and I'm doing <laughs> great. Oops. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm, you know what I am? I'm building up what they find now is very important, the microbiome. So when you don't change your underwear for a month, two months, right before you get a urinary tract infection, <laughs> then you wash, you'll have the strongest immune system. If germs come into contact with your your skin, they will be jumped. Just... <laughs> <laughs> they, they will be whacked. You can literally hear them screaming. Yeah. <laughs> no! It would be like going into a fire. You have, will have the strongest microbes. Your, your, your skin will be like the Ganges. It will just be undefeated in the micro. <laughs> 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 uh, <That's bad. laughs> wow. We got to make fun, right? Because it's the only thing we got here on Earth. Yeah. Cheers, it's the Charlie. Only thing, yeah. If I had my, my Gordita Crunch, I would cheers you with that. So... <laughs> The prevalence of obesity is higher in black and Latino adults, 4.9%. Uh, Along with di diabetes is, is much more prevalent amongst minority communities. Yeah. Always has been because so, of the diets forced and, on people. And, you know, this is where I, I've been, I read some about Marx and everything, right? Joel, oh, good old Karl Marx. Good old Charles Marx. Charles Marx. I Charles, like to call Groucho and Carl. I like to call I like to call people their wrong name like uh, Alfred Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote from Alfred Einstein, man. He, he said that. Yeah, 
Um, Fish Jeffries. <laughs> but uh, who was I talking about? Uh, Karl Marx. Uh, Char- Charles Marx. Uh, Christopher uh, His His buddy... Uh, his buddy Engels came up with this idea of social murder, all right? And this is basically when industrialists or capitalists on a, on a mass scale or the elite or the rich and wealthy or the kings and queens, they decide to do something that poisons or, you know, puts in jeopardy or puts the health of, in risk or k- kills people on a mass scale, especially poor people or people of a certain race or something. They have a word for this. It's called social murder. It's when the uh, cheapest foods are the worst for you. The, Mm -hmm. you know, and they're all at eye level and have the brightest colors. Mm -hmm. This is a form of social murder. And it's clear through that data that we're just talking about black and Latino uh, people having greater prevalence of diabetes highest prevalence of uh, obesity. I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. I was poor too. I ate that bad food and I'll probably die early thanks to my gordita crunch and my <laughs> slurpy, <laughs> my slurpy, my cheeseburger a la mode that I had <laughs> every day for breakfast. <laughs> Sounds kind of good. Yeah. You know, one time I went to a diner when I was a, uh, when I lived in Denver as a as a teenager, and I ordered biscuits and gravy and a milkshake. Like that was a fucking meal. That's <laughs> that's the breakfast of champions, right there. Jesus Christ! Why <laughs> can't you just bring me a, a hose clamp so I could just actually clip off my own arteries? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. If you you see historically, that's the kind of shit that they ship to like low income communities too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's sad. Like <laughs> the reservations, you know. Yeah, like oh, you can't you can't harvest wild food. That's that's an Indian thing. You got to eat this crap instead. It'll it'll make you. Um, white or whatever it was supposed to make you do kill the Indian to save the man right bored it's messed up man makes no sense now a lot of don't make a lot of sense makes me sick makes me real sick makes me real thicker than an old old zempic I think I'm gonna take me some of these pills gonna make me thin (laughs) Well, and you know that after someone stops taking Ozempic, they may experience changes in blood sugar, changes in appetite, and weight gain. So once you stop taking it, you're just going to put the pounds right back on, so then you're addicted to Ozempic. Right? Is that so? See, that's the thing, is that now you're on... What what makes the most sense to capitalists is to have you on a subscription plan so that the money comes in, you know every month and then they can go to their banker and say look i've got you know repeated customers that are on a subscription basis the pill factory is stocked yeah the the banks love to give a loan to people like that then your credit's really good if you can prove that you have i got people under contract can't go nowhere uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know your name should be hickory whenever you do that <laughs> <laughs> I, I always tell my wife when I'm doing like uh, I always talk about I'm gonna go listen to me some Travis Tritt <laughs> honey you know I'm gonna go to that concert I'm gonna get you a t-shirt of Travis Tritt not John Michael Montgomery a John Michael Montgomery George Jones and Travis Tritt is my favorite oh, I was listening to George Jones yesterday Oof. What yeah. a fucking maniac, by the way. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. Girl, those country guys got the who looking like pansies, man. <laughs> yeah. People should go out and look up this uh, Mike Judge, the creator of Beavis and Butthead. He's got this uh, show <laughs> That's the called one thinking of. Tales from the uh, Tour Bus. Oh, it's and so good. It's so good. There's two seasons of it. And the first season's like country stars and the next season's funk musicians. Yeah. Like Rick and James is on there, right? 
It's phenomenally so, funny, and anybody so who likes anybody who likes music will get a kick out of that. But, um, buddy, we went over time. We're done. All right. Well, I guess we uh, gotta call. Go hang out with Jerry Lee Lewis now. Yeah. Oh, now he died. Never mind. Yeah. He, all of our heroes are dead, Charlie. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. Makes me sad. No all more right. heroes anymore. Who, who's next? What's next week, Charlie? Let's see. What do we got? Uh, well, we we barely even got into the global arms trade, uh, which I think we still need to get into in depth. Uh, we got some people some nuggets of info. I think that's nice enough. Yeah, we've got we some came, nuggets. <laughs> we came with the hard data. We came with a few laugh laugh them up jokes that's all right we did all right well we're not trying to yucks we're not trying to reinvent the wheel we're just trying to have a good time i wish we could reinvent the wheel just make it a hexagon i'll make it square and then so that we can halt progress all together that'd be nice (laughs) ain't nobody going nowhere now (laughs) you can't make no wheels now Tell you what, boy, you go down there with them square wheels, you ain't going to get too far. <laughs> oh, Hickory. Hickory, my, there he is. Coming my name's out. Hickory Tritt. <laughs> Hickory Tritt. Lost, lost, long, long lost son of Travis. <laughs> I love that. Alan Jackson. Hickory Tritt. <laughs> I'm Hickory Tritt. <laughs> How y'all doing? I'm Hickory Tritt. I'm on, I'm on, we're going to be talking about some laws today. We're going to be talking about hunting. We're going to be talking about deer hunting. You yeah, don't sit down in that dumb blind there. Come on down to the Jackson. Come on down to Jackson. I tell you what, I went into the Piggly Wiggly. They didn't even have any more deviled eggs. Oh, you tell me they ain't got not, 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 not crawlers. Not nary one down there. They was plumb out. Oh, then if you got some plum juice, you gonna get some plum juice back in there. I'm gonna get you some plum juice down in there. Oh, that's how back. they, that's how they talk in New Orleans. They're like, oh, what? you gonna back down in there? What you gonna, <laughs> no. what you gonna do down in there? Go and get in there. <laughs> what you gonna go get up in there? <laughs> <laughs> they say, they say oil. They say Earl. Get, get you some Earl on there. Oh, Earl. <laughs> Mm. Louisiana is such an interesting culture to me because it's like this weird southern French mix. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I loved it. How how long did you spend down there? Not long. I think I only spent. I've only been in New Orleans maybe twenty four hours in my entire life. Yeah, did you go to the swamps or anything too? I didn't. I I was more in the swamps in Alabama. That's cool. Like I, was, I was down by Mobile and that. Mobile. That was cool. Shit, but buddy! Louisiana, I, I didn't see. I, I was doing drywall down at the new McDonald's down there in Mobile. Ah, shit! That was God. What year would that have been? Even 2010. 2000. I was in Mobile. I love Mobile. You you seen that big pyramid they got in the middle of town? I don't even think they had that then. They had them. No, it's an old Masonic temple. Oh, re- I mean, it's pouring rain the entire time I was there too. So. Did you, did you go? Maybe it was obscured by clouds. Maybe it was obscured by clouds. I like that word, obscured. Dude. I remember taking the, there's a ferry that went between uh, from Mobile to, I don't know, what was that? Where some was other, I? It's probably some <laughs> Biloxi. I remember Biloxi, driving, Mississippi. I drove through Biloxi. I did not stop. Biloxi. Biloxi. They say, blues. they say it down there, they say Bluxy. Bluxy? Bluxy, Mississippi. Oh, Bluxy. Oh, I've I been... went from Gulf Shores to Dauphin Island. That's the ferry. Oh, cool. like. That was actually very cool. I mean, don't I love Alabama. I think that whole region is beautiful. But it's, it's just... Got the forest. It's, as soon as you run into people there, you look out. But then <laughs> if nobody's around, you, you're doing good. You're living large. You just, Watch out for ticks too. I mean, oh no, the I, ticks are terrible. Mm. Yeah, but then but, you'll uh, meet some of the most progressive, awesome people out there too, which is oh, so sure, strange. sure. And 
As a contrast. I mean, because there's, there's great people everywhere and there's shit people everywhere. Yeah. I always, I got friends that have been like communist strongholds in places like Iowa and I'm just like, good on you, man. Right. Ooh, for next week, here's another one we can talk about. The new cop city they want to build in Baltimore now. Oh, everybody's doing cop cities now, huh? Mm-hmm. The new and the next one's Baltimore. Are they so, chopping down forests to do it? I don't know. I just saw like a glimpse of it. Let me see where it... I think it's in a in a poor neighborhood or something instead. Like, Well, well let's cover that. Let's cover the whole cop city thing. Well, as this goes along, let's get a little bit more prepared for the for the thing, and then we'll we'll hammer through some of this stuff. But we do pretty good as is. Let's spice it up a bit. Let's come correct with uh, some topics and. Uh, oh, here we go. Break it's the news. West Baltimore's Coppin State University campus, three hundred and thirty million joint training facility for Baltimore's police and fire departments. Just what they need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a correlation between more police and more safety? I think it's less. I think the correlation is actually always less. That's just a left libtard, uh, mis, <laughs> you know, misinformation. The snowflake view. <laughs> Those are some of your fake news. Just because you hate America and you hate the police. Okay, is there more police with with more police? Is there more safety? I'll ask the oracle. <laughs> That's complex. I would think that it is actually hard to decide because in in some neighborhoods like in um suburbs, I don't really think they're necessary. No. And yet they overstaff them because they have the tax money and and that it makes certain suburbanites feel safe. But on the other hand... Well, and it's also how you classify safety, too. Because is it just the cops going around arresting kids for weed and being like, oh, we're, we're making the streets safe? Yeah, basically. Like uh, busting people that have their grass too high or something like this. <laughs> well, this guy's drinking an open container. Let's throw him in jail. Yeah, yeah. We, better, we better fucking penalize him. And mm. penalize him good. <laughs> <laughs> Love me that penal system. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting in a room, like wearing like silk robes. <laughs> mm, penal system. Mm. I feel rehabilitated. Um, <laughs> but I think in the ter- in terms of like inner city crime. I think poverty is not, is the decider of crime ultimately in those situations. Yeah, and that no matter how many police you put out there, you're not going to rehabilitate people from poverty. You know, you just aren't. Well, you I know? mean, how often does it, do the police actually like? I was there to stop that bank robbery or whatever. Yeah, like for real never- crimes. At the scene of the murder or rape or robbery, never. Yeah. Yeah, how I many, mean, how often is, like, the police roll up, like, oh, there's a rape happening? Like, <laughs> does ever? Maybe every once in a while, I think so. <laughs> um, they probably prevent a few, too, but in reality, nobody sees it. That's the problem, right? Mm-hmm. And all the rapes that go unreported and... You know. Oh, yeah, and we could also talk about Sweden becoming the rape capital of Europe and right-wing pundits trying to blame it on immigrants when in Uh, reality it's it has nothing to do with immigrants. It has to do with the uh, the definition of rape changing from any type of sexual assault turning into a rape. This is my understanding of it. That has upped their numbers quite a bit. But it's given right-wing people so much ammunition to say. Uh, it gives fuel. Always. Yeah. Well, it's brown people. Don't you know they're <laughs> primitive? Blah, blah, blah. They lack the right. Uh, there are over 200,000, according to the FBI, unsolved homicides in the United States. And this number increases around 6,000 times every year. Well, all the, it's, an, it's an insane amount of people that just disappear and go missing and Holy are never smokes. found again 
And like so, the milk, milk curtain people. <laughs> yeah, mil milk carton people don't get found. You know, they, the mystery remains open forever, right? Well, have you ever heard of in Canada the, the highway of sorrow or whatever they call it? Where it's like an insane amount number of women have just gone missing. What is it called? It, it's a lot. It's like heavily like native women. I, too. I dude, I have heard of this. I just don't know what the the story is. It, may, it sounds like a serial killer story. Like there's some Jack yeah. the Ripper truck driver in Saskatchewan who's like the Highway of Tears. Yeah. What, what's what it's all about? Uh, the Highway 16 between Prince George and Prince Rupert. Then the location of crimes against missing and murdered indigenous women beginning in 1970. Disproportionately high number of indigenous women on the list of victims. Hmm. Then it's still going on. 80 plus known as missing and murdered indigenous women. Unsolved. Which area? Uh, British Columbia, like northern British Columbia. Between Prince George and Prince Rupert. God. That, yeah, I mean, what's the... What do you think? Some satanic sort of racist uh, f cult of weirdos out there who are... I don't know. It makes me wonder, is there... Is, is there, yeah, this, this giant group? Let's see. Serial killer Edward Dennis Isaac... Was convicted of multiple murders. So some of these, yes, but I don't know where did all these people come from. There why was are there a, so many killers up. Why are there so many serial killers up there? So here's the thing: as I saw a movie, and I know that this isn't fact, but it it was a movie with. Uh, God, I forget who was in it. Anyway, the premise of the story was like a bunch of roughneck oil people or like hardworking people up mm -hmm. there in the northern provinces. Mm -hmm. They uh, they were like raping uh, indigenous women like willy-nilly. Just doing it for fun. Yeah, I just think they probably can get away with it. Also, I think Alaska is pretty high up there with the rape capital of like the United yeah. States. Alaska's crazy. There was like a lot of gang violence, like which you don't think about in a town of like three hundred or whatever. Yeah, I remember being in Barrow, and it was like this Thai taxi driver got stabbed by one of the Filipinos or something. Like, there's a lot of weird racial violence against like very small groups of people up there they also have the highest instance in alaska of uh taking antidepressants which i suppose i understand if it's but it's so beautiful up there too you know yeah but in the winter when the sun comes up at 11 and goes down at three you're gonna get i had a happy light when i was there i don't know that it did anything didn't work yeah like, look at this <laughs> permanent scale oh you look fine um Okay, so the issue of violence against indigenous women in the context of resource extraction activities such as those in the petroleum industry has been a major concern in Canada. There have been reports and studies linking the influx of workers into indigenous communities, including those in man camps, to incidents of rapes and assault against indigenous women, uh, which totally called it. I don't know, maybe the movie was just accurate or it just made sense to me that that would happen, but... Nailed it, yeah. Um, I it's, Im it's important to note that the specific question of whether roughnecks, a colloquial term for oil field workers, <laughs> rape a lot of indigenous women in Canada, it's not directly addressed by the... Well, you basically just answered my question. Thank you, Mr. AI. I, that's <laughs> right. I rely on AI to tell me what's good. Let the, let the robots rule. Ah, and basic <laughs> shit like this. Sure, why not? <laughs> Give me the hard data. I'll analyze it. Roughnecking. Just want to say roughnecking over and I, over. Roughneck. My uncle was a roughneck. Roughneck. I remember Ruff. I gave, I picked up a hitchhiker in North Dakota who was a roughneck. A roughneck hitchhike. Going up to the oil fields in North Dakota. I wonder who he raped. 
<laughs> Me. Somebody. Right. Well, now, I remember it was like 8 a.m. He's like, you don't want to go drink a 40 yet? I'm like, nah, I'm good. It's 8 a.m. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My friends who did that, they're dead. They died yeah. at 30, before 30. I wonder where that guy is now. I don't know. Look it Probably up. Probably not in Bismarck. <laughs> yeah. Alaska, though, and, and up there in that, in that area, yeah. There was a serial killer when I was living up there. Really? What, what, what happened? That was terrifying. He killed eight people, including one guy that I actually met maybe like a month before. It was terrifying. And then I think they finally, he knocked on the door of like the, of a cop or something and tried to kill the cop and the cop shot him, I think. Is how he finally got caught. Holy shit. Alaska has had several notable history with, uh, uh, Several serial killers. Notable cases. Oh, yeah, the guy who hunted people? That was fucked up. Oh, man. You he, like, never hunted get... women? God. Who? What happened? He would, like, kidnap women, and then he would make, like, a game of it. He'd be like, all right, go run into the forest, and he would, like, hunt them. Oh, God, that's sick. It's There's, like, a John Cusack movie about it, I think. Gross. <laughs> I hate movies like that. I just hate that... that, that yeah, like thing. giving giving these disgusting people. And historical... you know what they do? They fuck. They, yeah, and they do. Like if you watch The Purge, that's nothing but pornography for f morons. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, I like to see justified homicide. Like, give me Django Unchained. Give me the Inglorious <laughs> Bastards. Now that's that's good cinema. Kill Hitler! Kill Hitler! Yeah, come on. But uh, innocent people is just it really, it really sticks in my craw, grinds my gears, doesn't blow my hair back, doesn't float my boat. <laughs> that's that's my hair getting blown back. I like it. Um, uh, yeah, Alaska's got a record amount of uh, killers. Lovely. Very well, lovely. Yeah, I don't know if that guy what his deal was actually but or if it was actually him who Robert Hansen yeah he's the one who's hunting people I think yeah well then you have these crimes of passion like it, oh, this it's James Dale James Dale Ritchie that's the guy who was there when I was there How, wait what year was that 2016 Holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, did they got him. Yeah, he attacked a cop and there was like a shootout or something. Yeah. Killed in, killed in a gunfight in downtown Anchorage by Officer Arn Salau and Sergeant Mark Patsky of the APD. I bet you he was a white guy. What do you, what do you bet? Yeah, he's like a white guy with ponytail. I think most serial killers are white guys. Yeah. It, it's true. I had to I had to look it up the other day. I kept on asking the like, "Whoa, well, uh don't men commit most of the murders?" and they kept on trying to pussyfoot around. I'm like, "Just tell mm. me the answer is 86% of all murders are done by men." Yeah, that's a very significant amount. Yeah. I mean, in all these mass shootings that have happened, how many of them have been done by women, too? Yeah, none. Like, none? There was a trans person, but... So that means that all trans people are murderers. Right, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. And then the, the right-wing pundits ran with that story. They were like, oh, oh boy, oh, boy. <laughs> and then I, I was like, look it up. And it's like 99% of the other shootings were right-wing lunatics. But we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> we don't need to. We'll just brush that one under the rug. Yeah. Selective yeah. reporting, you know. God. Um, oh, according to the FBI, 82% of American serial killers were white. 
15% were black and 2.5% were Hispanic. And then it's telling me to don't get, don't make stereotypes, guys. <laughs> I'm like, but it's 82%. You can make yeah. stereotypes after a certain percentage. That, that's a significant amount that I think deserves to be uh, recognized. A rule of thumb. Look, uh, correct me when I'm wrong, okay? Yeah. Do Chinese rule people... Are, are are elephants heavy? Yes, are. <laughs> but you might meet one that's uh, that's not heavy. Okay. Well, until I meet him, let's just say elephants are heavy. <laughs> but you're stereotyping. <laughs> okay. well, We're happy. My phone's right. about to die, so I got I got to run here. Well, you went overtime, so. All right, Charlie. We'll talk to you next week. All right, man. Bye.